Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Theater Com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. Well, we're going to be starting things out with the Vega Inside image, which was doing the rounds yesterday. This image alleged that, well, we're going to be seeing AMD's Vega graphics technology inside an Intel CPU. We're going to have an update to that. I think you could probably guess what the update is. Then we'll move over to a piece of NVIDIA news that the Afterburner application does indeed confirm the existence of a GTX 1070 Ti tie, which, well, surprises no one. And the formal announcement from NVIDIA of the Drive PX Pegasus. Now, this is the first board capable of level 5 autonomy, but here's what's very interesting. Not only is this going to be a revolution for AI in self-driving cars, but it has a graphics technology which is post-Volta. So to clarify, this means that not only does NVIDIA have Volta coming out, but it already has a generation of GPUs uh, beyond that, and we're going to be discussing what that could possibly mean in just a few minutes, and then we're going to finish the video with something a bit funny. Because if you can't laugh, you would probably just cry. Because the designer of the iPhone has categorized misuse of the iPhone as constant use of the device. In other words, if you're using your iPhone regularly, well, I've got bad news for you, pal. You're actually misusing the phone, so that's not an issue. Which uh, Apple are responsible for, it's you, my friend. But, as I said, we're going to be starting things out with Vega Inside. Now, I did cover this yesterday because, quite frankly, I know if I hadn't have covered the topic, I knew I would have gotten bombarded with messages. In fact, I already got a couple of them anyway. But there's an update. And I'm going to give all credit to the website Tech Critter. The Vega image is actually one of the posters for Intel's Employee Appreciation Campaign. Essentially, this means that where well-performing Intel employees get nominated, you basically get an award. So an Intel employee can nominate either their colleagues or they could, if they so desired, nominate themselves. And this is where it gets absolutely bizarre. The employee um, who has been featured in the image that was doing the rounds apparently just happened to have Vega in his name. Uh, you can't make stuff like this up. Well, I guess kind of you can. But that's the too long didn't read version of this. I'll put a link to the article in the video description so you can check it out. But if you're just wondering if Intel are going to indeed be putting uh, Vega in their uh, next generation Intel's processors. Well, at least with this rumor, we can pretty much lay it to rest. Next uh, rumor, well, not even a rumor, this is actually fact. The GeForce GTX 1070 Ti slash Ti has actually a official, and I use that with massive quotation marks, announcement in the form of a changelog on MSI's Afterburner, which of course is the tweaking slash overclocking slash monitoring program. This allows you to adjust the core voltage of the reference design of NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1070 Ti. And this update, just so you're also aware, allows voltages to be adjusted for RX Vega as well via Afterburner, just for your uh, information. Okay, so self-driving does sometimes elicit groans from people whenever NVIDIA talk about it on stage. I personally think it's very interesting because it does tell us what level of technology we're at now. And quite honestly, it's very impressive how fast this technology is moving. However, there was an announcement, a couple of very interesting announcements at GTC Europe 2017. The first is that we're seeing the existence of the Drive PX Pegasus, which is a level 5 driverless uh, robo taxis. Now, what does that mean? Well, NVIDIA have coined a term which stands for Deep Learning Terra Operations Per Second. You can call it TOPS. Now, this particular module is capable of 320. To put that in any level of context, the previous iteration of this hardware was only capable of around the mid-20s to at most 30. 
According to Jensen Huang, he said the driverless cars will enable new ride and car share services. New types of cars will be invented resembling offices, living rooms, or hotel rooms on wheels. Travelers will simply order up the type of vehicle they want based on the destination and activities planned along the way, and the future of society will be reshaped. In short, you could basically just be almost in like a limousine, but it will be for the average person. Imagine it's going to be a, a taxi service. Now, how, of course, this actually works, I guess it's going to be Uber on steroids, which I imagine could, well, let's say upset certain individuals, but it will be very cool. Obviously, this technology is still fairly young, and it's going to take a while before this becomes anywhere near a regular thing. But I'll continue. Uh, driver PX Pegasus is powered by four high-performance AI processors. It couples two of the Xavier system on chip processors, features featuring excuse me an embedded GPU based on the Volta architecture with two next-generation discrete GPUs with hardware created for accelerated deep learning and computer vision algorithms. The system will provide an enormous computational capability for fully autonomous vehicles in computers the size of a license plate. Dr drastically reducing energy consumption and cost, Pegasus is designed for an ASIL certification, the industry's highest level safety with autonomous, excuse me, automotive inputs slash outputs, including CAN, a controller area network, FlexRay 16, dedicated high-speed sensor inputs for camera, radar, LiDAR, and ultrasonics, plus multiple 10 uh, G-bit uh, Ethernet connectors and its combined memory ex bandwidth exceeds one terabyte per second. As a small other aside, it appears that this uh, GPU has a TDP of about 500 watts and perhaps most impressive of all, it is cooled solely by air, which is very, very, very awesome. Unfortunately, we don't know too much about this next generation. It does seem that it's created with the idea of deep learning slash this type of uh, usage scenario in mind. Does this mean that Volta is not going to happen for the desktop? I don't know. At this point, no one really knows what NVIDIA are planning other than NVIDIA themselves. The only comments we know whether Volta is going to be coming to your desktop anytime soon is that NVIDIA believes that currently it's just too expensive to produce. However, it's possible that they were referring to higher bandwidth memory in the really high-end versions of Volta. Perhaps we could see a cut-down version with a redesigned memory controller, i.e. for GDDR5, 5X, or even 6 in the not-too-distant future. But unfortunately, that's just too difficult for us to predict. However, it's possible that we may be getting Volta next year. And this is pure speculation. These are not rumors. So please don't say that Paul at Red Gaming Tech has sources which... No, this is just me speculating and you're welcome to do the same. It's possible that we may be getting Volta when these things become standard or normalized in the next, I don't know, 6, 12, 18 months, whatever, for possibly server farms, HPC, mobile um, mobile usage, and which of course I mean vehicles. It's just, it's very up in the air at the moment. I will, however, link you to an interview I had with NVIDIA's Neil Trebit. I'm working on editing the first part, which I guess will be the second video as you guys see, which is going to be more Vulcan orientated. That should be up in the next few days. For your FYI, also for stuff that's coming on channel, I have a Ryzen 3, which has just arrived. Um, we have the Threadripper 1950X, because a couple of people have wondered what processor it is. 1950X plus the X399, and I'm waiting for a GTX 1080 Ti slash Ti as well. I'm probably going to start the CPU side of things first, and then I can basically just swap in the, uh, you know, the higher end card in the not too distant future. But I need to talk to you about this, because this is not really tech. Uh, well, I guess it is in the broadest sense of the word, but it's more lols meter. Oh, dear God. Um, so, the iPhone, whether you like it, whether you dislike it, was a very influential device. It was very impressive. It, it did, for lack of any other way of putting it, it just, it really changed the world. The, the, it changed the world. Now, I would argue now that Android is probably a better device, but that's really down to preference. So I don't really want to debate that. What I do want to talk about, though, and you can't make this quote up at all. It's just, oh, God. Um, 
Jonathan Ive, who is Apple's chief designer, actually, to be fair, he's Sir Jonathan Ive, has said that the iPhone is a wonderful use, but people are misusing the device because they are constantly using it. Now, this, of course, is not the best time for um, these comments, because if you remember, perhaps you haven't really been following iPhone news, and to be honest, I don't blame you if you just decide to stick your head in the sand. We all know that iPhone 8 has, well, just been launched, and it hasn't been quite as successful, maybe, as what some people had predicted or uh, Apple had hoped. But here's the kicker. Uh, just about a week ago, I believe it was start. I believe incidents started popping up around the second, third, maybe fourth. Um, there were reports that iPhone 8 Plus devices were literally bursting open, and this was due to well, battery failure. Basically, it had just expanded. Now, yes, you can make a lot of jokes. You can say that perhaps it was just expanding to, I don't know, accommodate a, oh, let's say, headphone jack. Just, just saying, maybe. Perhaps it's just so that you can replace your battery and Apple are just saying, you know, okay, this is how you open the phone. It's automatic. It's an next revolutionary feature. I'm sorry, uh, it's very hard for me to take this stuff seriously. Just the very fact that he says that people are misusing the device. Now, there are definitely fringe cases. There are people who will be using the phone 24-7. That will be constant use. And also, not just constant use as in I'm using my phone to text or browse the internet or take photos, but also I'm not taking care of it. So I'm consistently dropping it. Perhaps have dust and debris in the, you know, the, the, the ports if I'm trying to charge it. You get the idea. But these type of comments are absolutely ridiculous. And if anything, they're kind of humorous. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.